Good day, YouTubers. I have to replace the Pro RSO charge that I use for charging my various banks of batteries with a Yandina combiner. The reason for that is the Pro RSO charge started to make a lot of noise, a lot of clicking noise, like a uh, telegraph signal or relay going in and out. Now, I spoke to the people at Pro Mariner and so far they've been quite helpful. But it's taking time because the time difference to the United States where they are is such that I don't want to stay up past midnight to talk to them and obviously they don't want to talk to me outside business hours either. So we're conducting it via email. Given that and the amount of time it's going to take to ship one out if they choose to replace it, I've elected to go with a Yandina combiner in order to get the boat back out on the water. The Yandina Combiner comes down from Northern Territory where the 12 bolt shop carries Australian stock and that's down here in about two or three days. So that's got the boat back out on the water. I'm going to fit this. I'll leave it in. If Pro Mariner decide that this is a warranty job and send me out a new unit, I will probably keep it and maybe replace it, put the Pro Mariner back in. We'll just see how things pan out. But for now, I'm just putting this in to get me back out on the water. This is just a short sound bite of the noise that the Pro ISO charge was making. I took this while I was out on the water last time, so there's a bit of splashing going on in the background, but you will hear the noise I'm talking about. This is the Pro ISO charge that I'm replacing. It's a very capable unit. This one will charge three batteries from the one alternator and it does that by charging the battery that needs it most first. You also prioritise your battery. This is battery one, you'd put that on your engine. Battery two would go to your house battery and battery three would go to your trolling battery, say. However, as it turns out, I didn't need all three of them, I only needed two which is why I've connected these two together so that I could just charge the house battery off that and the trolling battery off the secondary one because I used the auxiliary charger on the Yamaha engine to connect to this and the primary alternator output goes to the engine battery so they're always charged. So I could have done with a small unit but this is what I had and this is what I used. Unfortunately, it's playing up now. It, I don't know what went wrong, it was making a lot of noise and pretty sure it didn't charge the batteries properly on that trip and also sounded like a relay cutting in and out and it created enough electrical interference in the boat that my sound just didn't work all that well so that's why I'm pulling it out and replacing it. Would replace it with the same Pro ISO charge but uh, the time it takes to get one of them from the States, particularly now with COVID on, is just impractical whereas I could pick up the Yandina unit in Australia. This is the box the battery combiner came in. Don't be alarmed by the size of the box. The battery combiner is really small. Doesn't take up much room at all and is actually a much better fit in the boat than the Pro ISO charge that I had in it. Not quite the same capabilities of course. It combines the batteries to charge two at once whereas the Pro ISO charge charged the battery that needed it the most first. Minor thing, uh, hopefully it won't be a major drama doing it that way. Yeah, that's the Yandina combiner unit. As you can see from my hand, it's a lot smaller than the Pro ISO charge. Not as capable. It doesn't actually send the charge to the battery that needs it, it just charges both at once. But that's cool. That'll do what I need it to do, I think. Because of the change sizes here, I've had a little bit of a redistribution of things. I'm going to drill a couple of holes there to help the screws go in because they're only these really, really thin screws and that ply is a bit hard to go in so I'm going to pre-drill them to make it a little bit easier to go in. I'm going to use that 1 16th inch drill there, that's about 1.6 millimetres and that will allow the thread to catch in the hole. I've got an old carpenter's trick here. You've got screws and you expect they might be a bit hard to go in Wet a bar of soap so it goes all slushy and then scrape a bit of soap onto the screw. It will lubricate it a bit and make it a lot easier to go in. If you don't do that and you really thin the screw you run the risk of snapping the screw as you're screwing it in. So there's a couple of tricks for you. 
I'm going to screw this in without a camera because I'm holding the camera and I need both hands to do this job. So I'll have to put the camera down and come back to it after it's on. It's getting a bit late now, so I'm not sure whether there's enough light to see everything in here. It looks pretty good in the video viewfinder. So there it is. The wires are still a little bit untidy yet. They'll look better once I move the batteries back and I can uh, know exactly where I can zip tie them up then. That's the main thing is the uh, Yandina unit is now in place and the Pro ISO charge is gone. So whether it comes back or not will depend, um, whether it's still under warranty or not I guess. So what does all this mean in terms of the charging capacity of my engine? Well previously my main alternator was connected solely to the starting battery so that it got charged all the time. The auxiliary charge line was connected to the Pro ISO charge and it split the charging between the house battery and the trolling batteries. Now what I have is the main alternator supply goes to the starting battery but also to the combiner which then combines it with the house battery and the main alternator supply charges the house and starting batteries while the auxiliary charger is connected over to the trolling batteries. That means both sets of batteries are always getting charged if they need it. And I guess that's okay, rather than distributing the charge to the battery that needs it, they're all getting charged at once, hopefully that's going to work fine. But there is a caveat, and that is the amount of charge that the alternator can put out. Now this is the alternator output of the various Yamaha engines. I have the 150, so the alternator output of that is 35 amps. But there's not 35 amps available for charging, that's the total gross alternator output and some of that's used for things in the engine, like keeping it going. So that leaves 21 amps available for charging, so that's your net output. That's split between the main alternator and the auxiliary alternator lines, so that means you've got 10 and a half amps going to each line. So I have heard people say, oh we've got a 40 amp alternator in their engine. Yeah, they have, but that's not the amount of charge that's going out to your batteries. When you think about it, this may be a better setup because the starting battery shouldn't need all that much charging and it was permanently connected to the main alternator output and the 10.5 amps of the auxiliary output was distributed between the house battery and the trolling batteries. Now the main alternator output is split between the house battery and the starting battery which should be fine and the other auxiliary output goes straight to the trolling batteries. The only downside that I can see is that the Pro ISO charge used to charge the battery that needed it the most first and now they all just get the charge. I think it'll be okay, it may be better, time will tell and I have to give it a few trips to see how it goes. Well that's it for this video, thanks for taking the time to watch it. I hope it's given you another idea on how you can wire your boat up to get rid of that manual switch and set it up to automatically charge your batteries and then isolate the engine battery from the house battery or once you turn the engine off. You can probably say I'm a little bit paranoid about having a flat battery out on the water. Whatever it takes, I want to make sure that my batteries are charged, or at least my engine battery is charged, so I can start that engine and get back home, no matter where I am. So anyway, that's it for what it's worth. Until next time, good fishing.